You can see here I've got this motor mount uh, welded in place. I'm still going to add a gusset on the bottom. But basically what I'm using is one inch by one and a half inch rectangle tubing uh, 095 wall. I've got the two front mounts located. Now I've got to locate the rear mounts. I have these McCabe headers and I don't want to damage these headers so I'm going to have to go around them to get my fitment. I've got my new motor mounts cut, ready to install. Now I've got to get my one inch spacer and my bolt. I can tighten it all down and then weld it up. Inside I have welded this half inch coarse thread nut. That way I don't have to worry about trying to get a nut inside of there or, or you know any struggles when I'm putting the bolt in. I drop it in from the top, I align everything and I tighten it down. When I build my motor mounts, I cut my rough shape out. I drill my hole where I know it needs to be and then I take my motor mount spacer and my bolt and I install them together. I tighten it down to make sure that my nut is locked down and then I weld my nut in place. This is just the easiest way I've found of making consistent, easy motor mounts. Um, and really if this gets damaged, I can cut it off and replace one really, really simple. Now we've got them mocked up, they are unwelded, they are bolted in, and they are tight. The last thing that I need to do is make sure that they are square and to make sure that the height is right. I'm going to recheck the level on my engine and recheck the square on this mount. Once those are good, I'm ready to weld them up. All right, so here we are, we've got them tacked into place. I built this little square to make sure that uh, they were correct. I've got my angle finder, I've got my angle right. I've got my, uh, my center aligned. I think we're ready to weld those up. So now that we've got the motor mounts locked down, they're not finished welding yet. Um, I will go back and finish welding those. i got to gusset them uh, and do a couple other things to clean them up. Uh, I'll finish welding them then, but now that I've got those in place, I'm ready to pull this engine out. I know my headers fit. Uh, I know my collectors fit. I know my oil pan is correct. So now I'm confident where I'm at here. I can pull this engine out and I can continue on with my foot box, my interior, um, you know, a lot of those little undercar things that uh, I had to get this engine locked down first to, uh, to ensure, you know, as I move forward. When putting motor mounts in your race car, there's a few things to take into consideration. One of them is, depending upon your rules, where the engine has to be located in between the frame rails. Some rules say they have to be centered, some rules give plus or minus one inch, you know, either direction. Another thing to keep in mind is the angle of the engine, how it sits in the car front to back. Now some guys like it uh, you know, tipped up at the back, some guys like it, like it tipped down at the back. I personally like to go one degree down, one and a half degree down in the back, uh, just because I know that you know, my, my distributor will clear, uh, my, my air cleaner is going to clear, you know, a couple of other things. Just because of the design of the chassis, it just seems like they fit when they're about one and a half degrees down in the back. Another and probably one of the most major factors that people sometimes miss is where your oil pan sits in relation to the bottom of your cross member. Whenever your oil pan, the bottom of your oil pan sits below that cross member, it is really, really vulnerable to one, bouncing off the track, two, debris coming underneath the car. Uh, one time I ran over a starter and it, uh, it hit the oil pan, damaged the oil pan, didn't knock a hole in it, but luckily it had been above the cross member and the cross member took the brunt of the force and luckily it just kind of skipped over the, the starter with my oil pan and it didn't take the, the entire oil pan out. Had it been below the cross member, that oil pan would have taken that thing and just shredded it. So be very mindful of where the bottom of the oil pan sits in relation to your cross member. In this car, it sits up about, uh, I don't know, about a half inch, five eighths of an inch. This will allow me room to put a skid plate underneath of it so that I know, one, I know that it's not gonna hit the track and travel, 
But two, if something does tumble underneath there, it's not going to poke a hole in it, so I'll have a skid plate. So between, like I say, your center, your angle, the direction this way where it's pointed, and the height of it from your, from your cross member, there's several things to keep in mind when mounting that engine. So you'll see later on that one of the things that I did with my dummy block, there's no crankshaft in it, so you can sight down through the, the crank journal. Also, I have the transmission bolted on it. So when I look down from the center, it basically gives me a straight line. And on my rear end, I've got a, a tape mark on it where it tells me directly where my pinion is. So when I set the engine in there, I set it just below that with, you know, my one and a half degrees downhill at the back. And I don't have to worry about any issues as far as alignment. Um, I've got plenty of, uh, plenty of room underneath of it. It's just a really, really good location for it. Another thing that I ran into with this particular engine is the headers that I'm using are McCabe headers. They're a beautiful, expensive set of headers, and I don't want to beat them up. So when I, when I put the car together, I had the engine, I had the headers on it, and I put my, my hoops, my bay bars, my support bars, all that on, uh, basically fit it to the engine. Um, if you're building a car and you're starting from scratch, that's usually your best option is to try to put as much of it together as you can and then build around it. That way you ensure that it fits and then you don't have to go through and start notching bars or beating on your headers. Um, everything is just correct that way. As you can see with the close-up of this cross member and the clip, I've got a lot of room because this is a stock stub. I did a lot of a lot of trimming a lot of cutting we had to maintain the stock lower pivots but by cutting all that out I've lost a lot of rigidity so I replaced it with this 3 16 plate that I had CNC cut I've got this uh, 3 quarter inch flat steel cross member that you can see right there and then I tied it in from the back all the way down to my torque box on both sides I will still tie into my lower uh, my lower a-arm uh, mount right there I still will gusset my motor mounts, but um, you kind of get an idea of what I did here. These are all 100% stock location. There's still material in there that shows that it's never been altered. I trimmed it all out and then I beefed it back up. But it's just the best way that I found uh, to do this particular car. As I was saying just a moment ago, I didn't want to modify my headers a whole lot to fit the car. So when I put my steering shaft in here, I actually had to cut that whole strip of clip out of there and then recess it with a piece of tubing. I welded it all up. I still have a bunch of grinding to do to clean it up. But I wanted to tuck that steering shaft in there so I didn't have to modify my headers. Last thing you want to do is start modifying stuff and, and you know making your headers less pretty just because you had to, you had to hack them in there uh, because you didn't plan your steering shaft. So go through every step of the way, plan each piece and, and it'll, it'll pay off in the end. You'll, you'll save time, you'll save money, and ultimately you'll have a nice, perfect product. We've got the engine mounts finished up. All the drivetrain uh, has been mocked up. I've got a few things left to do, uh, but I got all the suspension pretty much mocked up where I want it. A couple things that I've got to change that I really don't really like. Uh, a couple things that may evolve. Uh, before we go to powder coat. Um, I did get the chance to push this thing all the way down to full travel and to, to know that I'm not going to bottom out any of my suspension when I'm on track, I run the cross member all the way to the ground and then I've got to have travel in that tire so that I know nothing's going to bind up in there. I did find some spots on the clip that are hitting the lower AM so I got some more work to do in that but that's nice to have when you're in this stage go through all those travels and make sure everything's free uh, nothing's going to bind up because it'll save you a lot of time later on. Um, we're ready to start finishing up the body. I've got the roof, uh, uh, the windows on this side of the roof. I've done this side of the body with some 32,000, some crappy, it was kind of dinged up material. Um, I just reused it and I was able to build this complete side. I don't have it on yet, but our next step is to go ahead and finish all the windows on the left side before they get cut out. Obviously those will be cut out before we're done. But this way I could bead roll into my steel, I could weld it all down. Um, build myself a window frame, cut the window out, do a little bit more work on it from there, and then we'll be, we'll be good. So my next, like I say, next step is do the windows on this side, which we will start uh, right after this video is done. The next video will be posted, will be on that side of the body. We'll get those windows finished up. We'll do all the tin work on the side of the body, build the entire body. Um, I am looking for a grill, uh, 
basically like the old roadsters had i want to get a grill that i can chop up and kind of lean back put my radiator behind it but um yeah that's our next step so i'm really excited to get that finished up um a couple weeks i've been really busy so i know this video is a little bit late but um i should be able to get rolling on this thing i don't have anything else scheduled to come onto the plate until the body on this is done we could set it back uh off the plate and then finish up all of our little stuff the interior uh, all that stuff off the plate. We don't need the, the plate to do the, the uh, interior. We really don't need the plate uh, to do the rest of the body because there's no nose height. There's none of that stuff. But it's just nice putting it on the plate and doing it on the plate because you just everything is perfect, right? So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Um, I'm going to get ready to get going on this body. I'm, I'm excited to get that side finished up. We are using 22-gauge steel, the same thing that I will use to build my fuel cell can. Um, I mean, the, the foot box will be made out of that same stuff. So I went and picked up a sheet of steel, and yeah, we're ready to start cutting and welding. 